Good afternoon. Thank you for attending this talk. Uh, I warn you, I know almost nothing about Joomla. So all I did is to install it for our test platform. I will talk about it uh, a bit later. And uh, my name is Pierre Joyer. Thank you, Brian, Brian for the introduction. Um, my main job is uh, to work on PHP itself, be PHP, the, the extensions, the libraries around PHP, like, like Couchbase, MongoDB, or uh, OpenSSL, and other extensions, or curl, and so on. Um, I also try to contribute to, as most as possible, open source projects, uh, not only related to web, but that, that, I do that a lot in my free time. Uh, I work with Microsoft, which I like to call the old dark force. So there is more, much more, more dark forces around uh, these days. And my main goal uh, with my job is to make everything portable. That means no matter which platform you use, be PHP or everything else, it has to, it has to, it has to work the same way. Uh, by the way, if I speak too fast or you don't understand what I'm saying, which is highly possible with my horrible French accent, uh, you can ask me questions afterwards. I can speak German or French as well. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. If you have questions per email, simply pierre at php.net. So uh, I always do that in my first, in every talk I give or keynote. There's just a couple of questions about statistics. I love the statistics. Uh, first question, I think everyone uses PHP here, so I won't ask it. Which PHP version do you use? PHP 5.2? Oh, that's a very good news. PHP 5.3, very good. PHP 5.4, even better. By the way, we will get 5.5 in around one and a half months, which it, we, it will be f fully compatible with, well, with 5.4 and 5.3, and almost 50% faster as well. So if you have some performance issue and so on, it will have also an upcut cache included. That means if you use APC or Zend Optimizer, now uh, PHP 5.5 will include the Z optimizer directly in the core. So you won't need to install extra extension to, to get one. That will also solve many problems by share, sharing hosts and so on, because you will get, everyone will get the same, host, the same uh, upcode cache. And do we have some people using Windows as a host platform or development platform? Okay, Linux? Debian, Ubuntu, uh, Red Hat, okay, S uh, how do you say it, CentOS, CentOS, oh, it took me a light. <laughs> and some people using already cloud hosting like Azure, Amazon, okay, Amazon or Azure, Amazon, Azure, by the way, we, um, for some people, uh, because I was working, I work a lot with banks and so on, and I like to have many different hosts, uh, we support Linux as well now, so you can have almost every platform you want on Azure. Not only Windows, but you can have, install whatever you want. And who knows Vagrant? Okay, Vagrant, if, if you do a lot of testing, or if you have a lot of uh, different environments, is a kind of uh, automation tools to deploy and configure virtual machines using virtual box. If you don't know it, and if you do work in multiple, uh, multiple environments, you, um, I would strongly suggest to, to try it. So uh, let's begin with the actual talk. So uh, this is a, a small list of uh, most issues or troubles or painful fact about the PHP.NET project in general in the last 15 years, at least since I'm, uh, I was there as well. And uh, one of them was slow release process. That means we have no idea when we release, so we will release something and when uh, we will get a bug fix. Or if you report a bug, you were lucky if you get it within the next two years in a release. And one this one was not necessarily true, but it was considered as an unsecure language. So many security issues was reported to be a PHP language secu a security issue when it was an application issue. And also, and this is my main problem, and we, I think uh, that's also why, and I thank you again, Brian, for that. I'm here to talk about that is how, 
hard or impossible it was to contribute to PHP and how it is easy and very easy it is now to contribute to PHP, no matter which way. And also another way, but that's, main, that's not an, only an issue in PHP, but there was a lot of dictatorship or egomaniacs, I like to call them, including myself. And uh, Neinzager, I don't know what to say it's, uh, in a nice way uh, in English, but Neinzager, I like it, it's just like. <laughs> so, and not open, that's not open like other projects like we have on, uh, like uh, one of my favorite open source projects is if you are in the graphic uh, uh, development like Cairo, it's a vector graphic library, it's one of the most open projects I know. It's, uh, they, it's wonderful how they do it. So <clears throat> the first thing I did a uh, couple of years ago is to introduce uh, an IFC process. The IFC process is, as you know it, just like you have for W3C or in Python or under other organization is to put in place a process to, to propose new things. Could be new features, uh, uh, um, new extension or whatever else. So anyone can write it. You don't have to be a, P a C developer or whatever else, uh, whoever else to, to propose an IFC. Uh, we have a voting process, which is uh, very, very good to kill any kind of rants or endless discussions or whatever. And the most important point for me was, uh, oh, sorry, the, that the community members are allowed to vote. That means, I don't know if we have someone from the Joomla community, maybe Ruven uh, now, because he's trying to contribute something, or already contributed something. But for example, we have people from the Symfony project, we have people from Drupal, WordPress, and so on, voting on the next, of what will be the next PHP version. And this, thing for, this is something we try to push as hard as possible, because you are our users. That means without you, no matter what we do, PHP will not exist. So you have the right to decide also which direction the language will go. The language itself or the extensions or the project in general. And the good thing is, once, a, once an IFC is accepted, we, it will be short, it will get very shortly in the next release. That will be what I will talk about in the next, uh, in the next slide. This is the link on IFC, so if you are interested to see uh, what, is it, what it is all about, just check the wiki. Uh, yes, we, PHP is a wiki as well. No, very few people know it. It's a very, so, a very well, good source for documentation, for to know what's going on, or and so on. The first pro the IFC we wrote was the release process. That means since PHP uh, 5.3 or 3.5 or 3.6, we have security-only releases. That means as soon as we have we found a security issue or someone reported a security issue in PHP and we got a fix we will get a release within two weeks. That's why, for example, if you follow a little bit the, the PHP releases, with PHP 5.4, we are already at the 16th or 17th yet. And before, for example, for 5.2, we, we needed something like five years to get these numbers of releases. So we just don't care how many releases we do, we do it when necessary. And we do, no matter how many bugs we found or fixed, every two, three months, we have a new release. So that means if you, if you are using, for example, 5.5.0 when it will be released, you know that after two months, the first, bu first bugs fixed will get in the release as well, maximum. And we have also, and this is the most interesting feature, I mean, at least for, for, for me or for many other developers, is we have a yearly release for new features. That means uh, yeah, one point of this release process is we, unlike before, when we have, for example, 5.3.3 as all the features that what we had in 5.3.0, which was very, very painful to use for application developers because you always have to check <coughs> sorry, function exists or whatever, extensions loaded and whatever, and it's a real, in real pain. From now on, new features we only get in 5.5, 5.6, 5.7, or 6. And it will happen usually uh, every year. And for what I see now is every new release will happen around June. 5.4 happened last year in June. 5.5 five will get some time uh, at the end of, the, uh, of June this year. And the next step is we also included many, many uh, distributions in the security team and all the bug fixes like Red Hat, Ubuntu, Mandriva. And last, uh, last month, Fedora joined, joined us as well. 
So we have much, a much more faster process as well to get from PHP.net, to get fixes from PHP directly to the distributions. And like the problem we got before, and you know it more than me, is for example like Debian, when you get something one or two years later, it's much faster now. Or oh, should be much faster now. And one of the main issue, issue we had before was we have almost no new contributors in years. And this is a, a small chart. Forget the two guys in gray on the right on white side. But all the three guys here are new inside the PHP project. That the top contributor in the first quarter last year. I did the same for this, uh, for this year. And me and Rasmus, we just dropped out the top five for the first quarter. And we have one more new contributor as well. And, uh, this guy put 80% of the new bug fix and almost 50% of the new features for the next PHP version. And 80% of the new features for PHP 5.5 are from, from new contributors. So this is something uh, we are really proud of it. And we, that's also why I'm here, because I would like to push that even more to get more and more contributors. And this is why what I will try to, to show you in, this, in the next step. And one funny fact is also as well that uh, Microsoft is also in the top contributor. One of those guys here was in, is in my team. And uh, this is on one way to contribute. It's not only about coding. It's also about bug report, testing, and so on. And from Joomla, we have, you have such a large user base, a, a number of application extension for Joom, Joomla and so on. This is the best test case for us. That means if you, if you move, for example, from 5.2 to 5.3 or 5.3 to 5.4 and you find issues and incompatibilities, do a bug report. This is contribution. And that will really help us to keep PHP uh, more compatible uh, across versions. One thing we do is, for example, uh, this is what we do in our, in our lab. This is a test report using the PHP core test, but we do the same. I only show Windows here, but we do testing. We do test on Debian, uh, Red Hat, CentOS, <laughs> and, and so on. And we test uh, not only unit tests, we test performance regression. We use Joomla, Drupal, Symfony, uh, WordPress, and a couple of other applications as a test platform. But we would like to extend that. That means if you're interested, uh, everything is on GitHub, uh, what we do there. So we can add application, or if you have plugin for Joomla that you, li you like to add and so on, maybe we can talk later to see what are the most used plugins for, for Joomla to, so we can add them to the test. And we do that on every single commit. That means every, every time we change something in PHP, the full test suite is run. And we have something like 100,000 of tests between application and unique tests for PHP itself. But we still find we still not catch every single issue. That's why we need you to test with your real life application and so on, because this is the mess. So as a conclusion for the first part, which is a bit so no more excuses, guys and male and, and uh, girls, please contribute. And if you have any issue to contribute, or please, if you have any question, you can contact me or drop a mail up to the mailing list and so on. <coughs> and I will show you a little bit now how you can contribute. The first step is, I think, you don't need to be a developer to write a good documentation. Or you should not be a developer to write good, good doc documentation. At least I cannot write good documentation. And we have, uh, I will just show you if I find my browser here. I hope the net is fast. If not, it is. This is <coughs> excuse me. This is the doc online documentation editor. You don't need a PHP account to to make modification. If you find find a typo or you need you like to improve a documentation for a given function, just log in. You can use uh, we don't need spell, but. I will. You can use Facebook or your Google account, or you can contribute to the online documentation, documentation editor if you like to, to add more providers, like Twitter or whatever else. But we support Facebook and Google. That should cover most, almost everyone. And I will just log in using my, my account. Yeah. 
if I remember it. Everything is in the PHP code repository. That means if you like to contribute it or use it for Joomla as well, it's very easy. But we use a uh, dog book, so it's maybe not the best format. And here you have a copy of the repository. And let's say I will take the reference. A simple extension file info to check. And here you can directly edit the format. As you can see, there is not a lot of information here, so this is a typical case when someone can improve it. As soon as you have some, pushed something here within one or two days, what you have done will be pushed in the documentation online. That means it's the same as what you can see. Here. But this is exactly the same what you can see on directly on the uh, PHP uh, documentation file. Any question about that or anyone interested to contribute in the documentation? I was not that convinced. <laughs> so the switch and I just showed a demo here. This is a more completed one. Sorry? Yes, the docu documentation team monitor it. And if you, at, at some point, uh, if you do it on a regular basis, they will ask you, hey, why don't you ask request an account? You will get a PHP in a .NET account, and you, you changes will get directly committed. And the next step is, but that's more for the developers in, uh, bet uh, uh, between us, is we move to Git. Who use Git? OK. Who you, very good. <laughs> uh, who, use, who does not use a uh, source code management system? Why not, if I may ask? OK, no good reason. <laughs> so um, the guy we have to thank for that is uh, David Soria Power, which is uh, a very good contributor to PHP and do, did almost alone all the job to move from uh, subversion to Git. And not only Git, is also GitHub. Who knows GitHub? Who use it? Almost. The same. OK. So and <clears throat> the very good thing about uh, GitHub is, and I like the little uh, quote for the uh, social code hosting. GitHub is nothing else than making, bringing people together to work on the same project. It's so easy to contribute to, to, to a project on GitHub. You can do what we call pull request. Do you know, everyone knows what a pull request is or not? So a pull request is, I saw a couple of people say no. A pull request is the idea f and, uh, on GitHub or also with Bitbucket and so on is, for example, you have a, a, a Joomla template or a plugin or whatever else. You have to like to, you found a little bug or easy to fix. You just do a fork. That means you make a local copy in your repository of the repository. You make your change. For example, a typo, some PHP ch code change or CSS, wrong CSS or whatever. And then you just click do a pull request. And that will, that will submit some, uh, to the original repository a patch, which we, you can comment it, you can discuss the patch, you can update it. A pull request can have hundreds of commits, or a complete new feature, or new rewrite. And then the original author only have to do one click to merge your, your work. And that's done. That means you don't have to submit a diff, push it on a mailing list or in a bug tracker that nobody will read, and whatever else, and uh, keep a, have to, to keep a track on it. The same feature works, for example, on other hosting like Bitbucket. Who knows Bitbucket, by the way? Bitbucket is, used, uh, is the same as GitHub, but you can also use other systems than Git, for example, Mercurial and so on, which could be better in some cases, but it's a taste matter. And for us, we have a tool on qa.php.net, uh, which automatically reports every new pull request. 
so we can directly see who uh, we can manage, that, manage them very, very quickly. This is the last, the one we got in the last couple of, uh, of weeks. But as you can see, you have many, many different years. Um, oh, wrong screen. For example, you have uh, so doc documentation comments. That means, as I said earlier, no need to know uh, C code or whatever else to do a pull request. If you see, a, for example, a function taking a wrong parameter or whatever else, you can fix it very quickly. So, um, the main PHP source code repository on GitHub is in, uh, inside the PHP organization and PHP uh, SRC. And you have all the repositories for documentation, websites, the online editor for documentation, the main website, and so on. So if you know PHP well, we are looking also for new contributors to work on the websites or on the infrastructure of php.net and so on. So uh, this is the more now uh, the part which has absolutely nothing to do with PHP scripting and so on. We will talk about how PHP works and how we can debug it, or how we can find a bug and report it. The first part is <coughs> a simplified version of uh, a, uh, a request. Is it big enough, or can you? Uh, everyone can read it. Okay. So you have a script, let's call it foo.php. It will go through the compiler. That means it will compile the script to what we call opcodes. Op, uh, op that means small uh, unique operation like echo or print or addition and so on. And once you have the, the opcode, it will go through the engine, the Zen engine, to be executed. And for example, you have function calls, or you will have uh, requiring that, for example, include another PHP file and so on. And if you have another PHP file, it will go through the same process. This is, a, this is the normal standard PHP running execution. If you have an opcode cache like APC or with 5.5 opcache, which is the equivalent of uh, the Zen optimizer, <coughs> will go through the same process, except <coughs> Here, if it's already cached, it will simply use it, or, to, or if not, it will go to the compiler again, cache it, and then execute it. For the first time, a file it will be called. <coughs> so, a simple script. <coughs> uh, I use it for, for this example, uh, substring. Everyone knows it, I think, for everyone for developing a little bit with, with PHP, which it return. Uh, Sub part of this of this string in this, in this case only the last uh, the first three characters and this is the equivalent uh, here we'll make a zoom I think so here you see <coughs> the assign for the first first uh, for example assign r one to one to five to five and here you see for example the function call with the two arguments. This is the variable we just created before, and the value, which is a constant. Uh, why do I show that? Is because it's easier when you debug a script to know what's going on under the hood. So you can know, okay, it uses this opcode and this opcode and so on. So it's easy to say, because inside the, inside the PHP source code, the function name, names have the, exactly the same name as here. The, the extension you can use uh, to see which opcode which op is used inside a script is called VLD. The link to the extension can be found at the end of the deck. So uh, if you download the deck or at the end of the, of the talk, you can just write down the, the link and you can find the extension. <coughs> this is a structure, if you, down, if you fetch or if you take a look at the PHP source code, you have <coughs> mainly three parts of uh, Directories. The first one is what you cannot disable, which is basically what Joomla is relying, relies on. This is the engine itself. That means the language like if, for, while, and so on. Also, where happens the compiling process and so and all the functions. The main uh, uh, folder here is everything about stream. For example, if you do fopen, HTTP something, this is implemented here. 
the SAPI, this is a directory where you have, for example, the module for PHP, the CLI module, and so on. And here you have all the extension you cannot disable. Turned out, we talked about it before, it's like a big mess when you have always function, string function, date function, uh, all the date functions, sorry. <coughs> and a couple of like random functions, some crypt cryptology function like uh, crypt, blowfish, and so on. The date function, which is, which is new since 5.2 and 5.3. SPL, who knows SPL? Okay, that's a, called the standard PHP libraries. That's where you have all the new iterators for directories, recursive iterators, and so on. I'm not sure how much uh, are, uh, of them are used inside Joomla, because this is something relatively new. But this is a power, power, powerful API, and sometimes much more cleaner than using standard function, all the standard function. And like, Reweg or PCRA for the regular expression and reflection. This is something about trade safety. I would say ignore that for now. And this is everything about Windows or Netware. And then you have what we call bundled exception like zip, GD, OpenSSL, and everything non standard, everything you can disable. And you have what we, uh, all, everything outside the core, which is on Pickle. Uh, Pickle is a uh, website where we do everything, every extension that is not in the core are usually available inside pickle.php.net. I mean, I mean, everyone using memcache or couchdb or whatever else knows this website because they are available here. Almost every distribution doesn't make a difference between core and non-standard extension. They simply use also the Pickle you do an apt get install or rpm install and so on. And if you don't remember something or you like to find, <coughs> I will show you, uh, you like to find where is an extension or where is a source code. We have, where is my mouse? Yeah. A very nice tool. Let's say I will try to find This function, and now you can you can find every reference of this function. <coughs> the problem is, it also search inside the PHP file, so you can simply say, as far as I remember, it should work with the C file as well. No. So we'll restrict to the definition because if it's search for symbol, it will search every single usage of this function. So it will return PHP function or C function or a script and so on. If you just search for definition, you know where it is directly here. And now you can find it. You can link back to, the, to this one. So this is a, a way to find, uh, <coughs> sorry, to find where is uh, the function where you found a bug. So now the most important uh, up back to my slide. <clears throat> memory leaks is, who knows what a memory leak is or not, does not know what a memory leak is. For example, if you, <clears throat> uh, PHP internally allocates memory from the system or using garbage, garbage collection. For example, if you, if, you, if you use a variable like $A and you have a string with, for example, John Doe, this string has to be freed at some point. So if this string is not freed and you, your server still run for, for days, weeks, or months, at some point you will run out of memory because this, this string will not be freed at the end of the request. That's what we call a memory leak. Mem uh, memory leak. And <clears throat> you have one tool which is called on Unix, a very, very nice tool which is called Valgrind. And if you call Valgrind using These lines here. The important part is this one. This one tells uh, PHP to do not use the garbage collection, to do not use uh, the PHP memory allocation. So it will simply rely on what the system does, like any other application. And it will simply report, for example, a bug report. Uh, the, where is the memory leak? 
And that's what we need, for example, as a core developer, when an end user come to us and say, my, my little PHP script runs out of memory after two days or after one hour or every hundred requests or whatever else. <coughs> we see it here. We see, for example, it, it just tell us where exactly it happened. And what we see here, we have the substring function, for example. I will show you how we can get uh, a little crash uh, or memory leak afterwards. But as soon as you have it, you put your script, you run it from CLI. Uh, you can do the same if you, you have to do it in the Apache. I won't have the time to do it now, but I can show you afterwards. And simply running this script, copy past what you have on the console, put it in a bug report, and then it's for us like 100 times easier to fix a bug when we have this kind of info. No matter how hutch is your script, if you use the wood, the full Joomla uh, installation to test it, this is for us one of the most useful information. On Windows, you have another tool which is totally not free. It's called Memory Validator. It does pretty much the same, but with all the, the fancy graphic interface and so on. But is, uh, how you call it, exact, it's exactly the same. Any question about memory leaks and so on? Or but if you have, if you are more interested how to test it because you have this problem right now on your website and so on, uh, I can help you afterwards uh, how to reproduce it. Another thing is, who got sec faults with PHP or who did not? Never got a sec fault in PHP. What we call like a 500, never? <laughs> That's, that would be the first time. <laughs> Uh, a sec fault is when, for example, you do a PHP request through app for Apache or, you, uh, or NGX or whatever, and you get, a, you get a 500, for example. You run a script, you don't know why, you see nothing in the error log, all you see in Apache are like process stop sec fault at blah, 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 and you don't know how to fix it. And as a PHP developer, uh, to, to, to begin to say, okay, I have to debug the source code and so on, it's kind of, uh, it's, not, it's not your job, it could be hard, or we may think, oh, I have to learn C, or I cannot fix the bug, and so on. <clears throat> and the thing is, it's not that hard to report a bug about a stack fault. And the more we get, the less stack fault we will get as well. So, obviously. There is one tool called uh, GDB, uh, which is uh, one of the most used uh, debugger on Unix. And the best way, uh, instead of showing you a screenshot right now, I will just make you a small demo. If you like me to switch to firmware, thank you. My mouse is here. No. Okay. So what I did, I used another function. Let me show you a bit larger so you can read it. So as you, here I just introduced a bug. What this function does is, I use another function, it's uh, strr char, which take uh, returns of the substring from the last occurrence of a, a given character. But when haystack is what I'm looking for. For example, I'm looking for A, or I'm looking for three, or whatever else. And null means, in this case, that there is no char. There is no character given. So the function using it will simply crash. That's the best way to get a crash. But it happens also in PHP or in C program, for example, when you, when you have many parts of the same application using the same point, it's called a pointer, or a reference, like a reference in PHP. It simply says many function will reset to a pointer and another function will use it again and crash. That happens a lot in Apache, for example, <coughs> with PHP. And we try to, we, we fix most of them, but we try to fix them here to fix the last one, the last uh, issue we can find. And even more, more of these crashes happen in every new release or new extension and so on. So, uh, to, to spare a bit of time, uh, I first I will remove this bug here.
already comp compiled PHP before, but just to show you, the idea to compile PHP is you can find everything in documentation, but I will show you just shortly. Uh, I did that here. When you get from the source code, if you get, do a git checkout or directly from the repository, you have to, to generate the configuration file. The configuration file is a way to tell PHP, I need this extension, these features enabled, and so on. And the way to do it is calling this line here. This, you need it, for example, if you use the latest Debian or Red Hat, five minutes? Okay, I will go quickly. Anyway, find that on the documentation, it will be easier. And now, just for the bug, This is my little script. Everything is, oh, I did not compile. So to compile is make, it will simply generate only the string file. If, it, if you do it at home from scratch, it will take, for example, on a on a laptop a couple of minutes. So here, everything is fine. I have my little, um, my results here. Now, if I introduce the bug again, Let's say another function just wizard. Is it the pointer? This is what we, you, you will get in the error log, for example, in Apache or whatever else. It could be another text like <laughs> segv, blah, blah, and so on, but this is what you get. It's not, and we got thousands of bug reports like that saying, I have this function and it does segmentation fault. But we have absolutely no idea where and sometimes people are reporting bugs using Joomla, WordPress, and so on, and ask us to do all the debugging for them. The point is we don't know all these tools, and it's e easier for us if we get a small script. So you all know relatively well or very well or expert in Joomla. So you just figure out where it, where it crashed inside PHP. You get the function name, which arguments are passed to this function, and you just have to put it inside a small, function, a small script like the one I have here. So it's very easy to, to have such a small script, sometimes a bit larger. And now, the problem I have now is to get where it happened. And you, we can use Valgrind as well in this case, or GDB. If you call Valgrind here, sorry, I will do the zoom. We know exactly everything we have called, where the crash is happening, and so on. So simply copying this line, and it takes like, as you can see, if you compile, it takes five minutes to do it. Copy this line in the bug report, and we know directly how to do it. How, where, where the crash is happening, which kind of function is called, and so on. And uh, you can, and then I even have some cases like a couple of weeks ago, someone never wrote a single line of C, and even provided a patch because the, the fix was obvious. For example, so we did not initialize a variable or whatever else. On Windows, uh, it is also very easy. I'm not sure we'll have the time to show it, but it's pretty much the same, except that you don't have to call anything. I think, do I have three minutes? I will do it this way. I will see if I have the crash. By the way, if you are using Windows, this is uh, the console two apps application, or there is another one you can have multi tabs on, on, on Windows and so on using console. So uh, I will just check if I have the bug inside or not. No, I will just compile it. Only difference is that you can build PHP on Windows exactly the same way as you do uh, 
uh, on Unix. Only difference at the end you call and make instead of make. This is a compi make compi as a make uh, command line for Windows. And now I call my little script with the substring function. And I got the bug. It will show you such a little window if you win. The UF Visual Studio is completely free, Visual Studio Express and so on. So as soon as you get a crash, you can define, okay, I want to debug it. And it will ask you if you like to open a given uh, Visual Studio version. And I already opened one here. It will show you a window. You can try to continue and you say simply break. And I will show you now, up there. Mm. Hang on. So. so, and this here, what you got before on using Valgrin or GDB, which, what we call a backtrace or the call stack. And here we see the exactly where the function. It's a bit easier on Windows, by the way, because you just have to d d d click, and this is where we got the bug directly. Hang on. And as we can see, we have here, we see that the last argument is uh, there is no value in it, and this is what we, we made here. So if you use Windows and so on, and you get the crash on Windows, you can simply install Visual, Expo Visual Studio Express. You get the crash directly. And all you have to do is select all the lines, copy. And if you have, let's say it's, a, it's not a, the bug report tool, because I won't have the time to go there, and simply copy that in the bug report, submit the, submit the bug report, and we have all the information we need to fix the bug. And usually, if we, the, the, time, the difference uh, b between the period when a bug is reported and the bug is fixed, when there is a backtrace, it will be usually fixed within two, three days. Without a backtrace, it takes usually one month, two months. So if you have a customer or if you have an hoster and so whatever, and you have a bug report or you have a crash, take maybe half an hour, one hour to get such a backtrace, and you will usually get a fix within one, two days, or three days maximum for most of the, is of the issues. And this is something, I mean, it may look like it's hard or it's like Chinese for the people not speaking Chinese here, <laughs> but uh, it's so easy to just take your human application, you have a crash, you see, okay, that's a substring or MySQL call or whatever, just do a small script, run it in the CLI or in CLI or with Apache or whatever you need, <coughs> or whatever you use, get the backtrace, do the bug report, and we can then uh, fix it very quickly. For example, I, uh, only on Monday, on my way back from, uh, from Switzerland to, to Munich, I fixed like five bugs, and I only took the, one, the ones with the backtrace, because then I can very easily analyze where the problem is. And everything I was referring here is available So what's also here, this is, if you like, if you like to take, uh, to take the sources directly from the Git, if you like, for example, someone told you <coughs> the fix has been committed to Git or to the C, uh, VCS, you can fetch the patch directly uh, from Git, and this is the link where we explain how to use it, where, what are the branches, where is PHP 5.3, 5.4, 5.5, and so on. <coughs> This is how to contribute to the documentation, how to be part of the documentation team. We are looking for translators as well, even for already well-translated languages like German, Dutch, or in, uh, other languages. We always need more people because there are very few doing this job at the, at the moment. For people <coughs> sorry, like Ruben or other, try, very interested to contribute to the core, like the engine and so on, we also have tried to improve the documentation, how it works. For example, the memory management, which is a very important part of PHP. People are interested in Windows, we have a wiki how to compile on Windows, how to use set up uh, a development environment on Windows. This is a, a, a LXS, this is a 
Cut search engine in certain place. VLD, this is how you get the opcut for a given script, so you know which part of PHP has been called. And uh, this is also a very useful link. If you say, okay, I would like to, to as a, if you have two hours left or you are driving somewhere or with a train somewhere, and you say, okay, let's try to fix the bug, this link here will give you any open bug. There are just some very old bugs, like 10 years old. Don't take them. <laughs> But there are new, there are very uh, new bugs which, which are some, sometimes very easy to fix. Call this, uh, this call this URL, and you will get a, a random open bug, for example. This is general wiki, and this is a link for other online documentation. So I'm sorry to have take a little bit more time, but uh, do you have any question or who will try to contribute in the next couple of days or who have bugs? <laughs> So uh, that's it for, to, for, this, for this talk. I hope I will get some of you to, to report more bugs using Joomla or using your website or your application or plugins or whatever else. And by the way, for, <coughs> for my team, the, the little chart with the testing platform, we are looking for some people to help us to configure a better Joomla testing environment. That means for Linux or Debian, CentOS or whatever else using a real website and so on. So if some of you have time and like to contribute, we are looking for some, some help here. So because we only test the standard demo and it's not representative of what Joomla is actually doing when we do performance testing and so on. So if some of you has interest, you can uh, talk to me afterwards. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention.